All right, hey guys, uh, welcome to our post-game discussion of Shell Sort. Um, if you're here, um, either you watched the last video and just want to go over it again uh, and skip all the intro stuff, or two, uh, you didn't want to watch me code at all, and you just wanted to get an explanation of what Shell Sort is. Um, uh, uh, I would suggest watching the first two minutes um, and watching me explain it in paint. Um, like on how it works and, and whatnot. I'll give a quick recap right now. Shell sort is just like insertion sort, where you have a group of numbers, and instead of just doing raw insertion sort, where you compare the ones next to each other and then go back down the list, you do them at intervals first. And this helps because if you have a large, if you have a small number all the way on the right side where it shouldn't be, insertion sort takes a while to get it all the way over, right? It's great if it's nearly sorted, but if you have somebody on the opposite side of where they need to be, you're going to have a bad time, okay? Oh, man, no meme intended. <laughs> um, but, um, um, so that's a really, really quick explanation of, you know, doing it in intervals first allows us to, you know, grab those really big guys and skip whole parts of the array so we have to do those long transitions. So when we're down to the final run-through, insertion short um, is now in its element. It's in its prime where the, it's already been sorted a good amount, by those intervals, so now we're fantastic. We um, uh, it, it's going to go really quick because it's nearly sorted, all right, where it works best. So it's kind of like a double whammy. We get to skip a lot of the big, the long chains of comparing guy, switching, comparing guy, switching, comparing guy, and continuing on, and we get to work at the end in a partially sorted array, which is great. So uh, shell sort works great. This is probably around the second fastest algorithm. Really depends on the situation. Situationally speaking, on average, it usually is. Um, sometimes it gets beat. Sometimes it even performs really badly. It really depends on the day. All right. Same with quick sort. Um, especially if like an array is like one. <laughs> in fact, bubble sort. Like the one if an array is like almost like just one value out of place. Insertion and like bubble sort usually win there, which is really funny because they're usually pretty bad algorithms. But Onto the explanation of the code. So here's the code uh, as you see it. Um, <clears throat> so we only have two functions. We have print list. Um, doo -doo -doo. We have print list and we have sort. Um, pretty quick. Sort's just going to sort the array. Print list is just a little thing for us to view when it's done. In fact, if I run the code right now, you just see it just prints out the list and we see it's working because <laughs> you see it's sorted. Um, the main's pretty quick. I'm just making an array, just printing it out, sorting it. Printing it again, pretty straightforward. That's what you just saw. Uh, we don't need to go into print list. Uh, you can pause the video. It's only like three lines and just look at it. Huh. Um, <clears throat> let's get into the meat of it. So we start off with our interval. Uh, there's multiple ways of picking an interval. Like you'll see, sometimes people start off with a while loop. Will they go while the interval? They'll start the interval at one and just keep moving it up in elements of like they'll times it by three and add one, times it by three and add one until they get to a third the size of the array and then just start. Uh, or or they'll sometimes go over a third, but as soon as they're over a third or around there, they'll stop. Um, there's multiple ways to pick. An interval, for this I just kept it pretty simple and straightforward. I just divided by two and every subsequent pass through, I, uh, that's a hard word to pronounce, <laughs> divide by another two. Okay, so as long as my interval is greater than zero. So why did I pick that? Well, because when the interval is one, it's comparing everybody next to each other, right? And that's just like level one insertion sort. That's just ground floor insertion sort right there. So once I've made my final, you know, insertion sort itself will just totally sort it. And then once I divide by two again, well, one divided by two is 0.5, but since we're with an integer, it'll go down to zero. So once I hit an interval of zero, I know I must be sorted. Because even if the, the guys above, I programmed it wrong, which I did the first time I was doing shell sort, and they just kind of threw people around, you know, the final run through shell, in, insertion sort, no matter how sorted or unsorted it is, will finish it off. It will sort it. Uh, how quick the algorithm is to it's depend on how sorted it is, but it will always be sorted by the time you get to an interval of zero. Okay, so I have two values, inner and outer, uh, and then a third one that's not really related, value swap, inner and outer. Well, outer is if I want to compare a guy in the middle of the array with say my interval is five, and I want to do it five steps back, okay? Um, uh, and when I start at the zeroth index, does that make sense? Because then I'll have to, uh, I want to compare them with five back, right? But I don't, have anybody five back to compare them with. So if I go to one, I still don't. And three, or two, I still don't. And the third index, I, I don't. So I'm gonna start 
at index, um, you know, uh, the, I'm going to start at the interval. So if the interval is 5, I'm going to start at the fifth index because I go 4, 3, 2, 1 to the zeroth index, right? I hit a button <laughs> in my code <laughs> on my keyboard. Um, so I'm going to start at the interval and compare myself back, right? Um, because the whole goal is to start at the end and grab all those big guys that shouldn't be there and throw them to the front, or the small guys, and throw them to the front of the line because they're, they're what's going to hurt us here. Okay? Um, and as, I'm, as I start in the middle, I'm going to creep my way up and start the chain comparisons back, right? And when I start the chain comparisons back, well, I'm going to you know, go to the guy, you know, this guy minus the interval, and then say he succeeds, and I've got to go the next comparison. Well, I have to subtract the interval again, and again, and again. And if I just take outer, and I continue subtracting and going back and back and back, I'm going to lose where I was at in the array. So I make another value called inner, and he's the inner comparisons, well, outer is my guy on the outside. Just continue going along, right? So the reason I make inner is just when I'm doing the back comparison so I can have a guy that I can manipulate and still keep where I was. It's like a, you know, a book holder if I want to go back and check somewhere in the textbook. Or a bookmark, bookmark. Yeah, that's the word. I uh, speak English. Um, so guess whose laptop died in the middle of recording? Uh, that was funny. All right. Not really. I'm going to have to find where it stopped. And the video kept recording for some reason because my computer went on nightly. All right, let's continue. <laughs> uh, so I make the value to swap nums inner, okay? Because I'm starting, I'm going to pull that guy out of the array and storm up here, right? Because if he is big or smaller than this guy, I'm going to move that guy up, right? And then if he's you know smaller than that guy, I'm going to move him up and so on and so forth until I find a place that he fits into, right? But say I didn't pull him out of the array and I just moved the guy previous up, well now I have lost his value, it's gone. So I'm just gonna pull it out, a copy out, and store it. So I'm sliding everybody up a bunch, you know. It's like if I, um, I wanted to reorganize the bookshelf, I pull a book out and I slide everybody up, and then I put him in where he's supposed to go. Uh, if I didn't pull that copy out, it'd be like if I just pulled the book out, threw it in the trash, and just slid everybody up for some reason. You don't wanna do that. <laughs> um, so when we start, so. Here's where I'm making my comparisons. Right here, is specifically, is where I'm making my comparisons. While he is less than uh, the guy previous than him, just slide that guy up, right? Just moving up the books until I get into the right alphabetical order. Now, this guy is to make sure I don't try and compare with something outside of the array. Because if my interval is, say, three, I want to make sure that he is at least bigger than the second index, right? He, I want to make sure inner is at least three, right? Because if I'm at the third index, and I, my interval is 3, then I go 2, 1, 0, and I compare with the 0th index. If I am at 2, then I go 1, 0, negative 1. Well, there's no negative 1 element. So I just make sure that inner is above that little threshold. Um, you could also just make sure that he's equal to the, greater than or equal to the interval. You could do that as well. It's really up to you. Uh, inside, for everyone that he is less than, I'm just going to slide them up a little bit and then compare with the next guy by just subtracting uh, the interval from inner, just going down another jump, right? Pretty straightforward there. When I get out of this while loop, it's either I'm at a place where I can't compare with anything before, or the guy is truly less than the value I have. So I'm just gonna slide him in the spot. It's like if I've you know, pulled him out, slid over all the books on the bookshelf, and I'm sliding him in. Okay, so I'm doing that there. Uh, and then once we're done with that pass through of that interval, I'm just going to go interval divide equal. I can just go divide equals two. Um, I was I had one bug in the previous video if you watched it, uh, which is actually this guy. I never set inner equal to outer, so it was giving me a loop. Um, but you can just do interval divide equals two. You can do it however way you want it to. You want it to kind of match how you got the interval in the first place. Like you'll see people times three plus one. So in the back they go minus one divide by three every time they do the interval down. Um, and they start from the beginning, like they start, they do that, start at one, and times three plus one, times three plus one, times three plus one. The reason that they do that for the interval, and this is really important, is because they know when they get to that point, like where they're going to start, that they can divide back to one. And that's important because say your interval is uh, two, for instance. And you're dividing by three. In fact, the first time I wrote it, I was just dividing by three and timesing by three. I just did interval is equal to the size divided by three, and I had the size of 20. And then every time I passed through, I just divided by another three. 
and if you divide by 3 every time, you'll get to a point where you have a remainder of 2. Your interval's 2. What's 2 divided by 3? Well, on integer division, it's 0, right? And once my interval is 0, I'm going to break out. So I never got to do that final insertion sort to make sure everything was great. And yeah, only one or two values were out of place, but they're still out of place. So the point of starting at 1 and uh, you'll see them, they, you know, I'll show you what it looks like, is uh, interval is equal to 1, and they go while interval. Now, no one explained this to me when I was first learning. They just said, here, here's how you do it, which I despise. I actually had to figure this out. This was the hardest part of learning shell sort for me, honestly. Um, so while the interval is less than, uh, the size divided by 3, interval times equals, or uh, interval equals interval times 3 plus 1. And you'll get to a point where you're greater than or equal to um, the size divided by 3, and you'll just stop. Now, in the end, before we do that, we got to put this in, colon, boom. Now, in the end, you'll see them undo their operation. Interval equals interval put the parentheses interval minus 1 divide by 3. Now when they do this, they know that if they did this operation here and they started at 1, they know if they undo the operation, they should return to 1. So it's a way of always making sure that your interval falls back to 1. And you won't get that effect of not having the final insertion sort that guarantees it will remain, it'll come out sorted. If you do not have that final insertion sort, you could get lucky, but it does not guarantee your data will come out sorted, which could spell big trouble. Um, so I think that's the end of my talk here. 12 minutes, that's like my shortest video yet, besides the intro. Um, I guess splitting up the videos between explanations and actually coding it is a good idea. Um, so that's basically it for shell sort. I, I hope this uh, kind of post-game uh, talk um, really helps you understand it a bit better. Uh, yeah, all right. See you guys next time.